so in this particular session i'll discuss the analysis of building structures against wind loading and i'll be following asc 7-16 approach for automated uh, wind load design wind load calculations and then at the end i'll also have an etabs demonstration uh, for an example building and i'll explain the main steps involved in the automated wind load analysis for that particular example building so let's quickly discuss about uh, the asc 7-16 this document actually uh, prescribes the minimum design loads and associated criteria for buildings and other structures so it prescribes all the loads uh, the procedures to determine the later loads for example seismic loads and wind loads the guidelines about live load and other types of loads for example flood load tsunami load snow load for example so all kind of loads are covered in this particular document asc7 uh, previously we used to have asc705 then 710 and now we have 716 722 is already there but for this particular demonstration i will be using this 716 version so i am currently not familiar with what uh, changes are uh, made in wind load calculation procedure in asc 7-22 so i'll be following asc 7-16 for this particular demonstration now uh, most of the most of the Asian countries have recently shifted their design practice from UBC 97 uh, to IBC approach. IBC actually started from 2000 and then we had uh, 2003. Then it uh, routinely updated after every three years. So we had 06, 09, then 12, 15, 18 and then finally IBC 2021 so this international building code which is currently being followed in many of the Asian countries for the conventional structural design purpose the recent ones like IBC 2018 and IBC 2021 they refer to ASC 7-16 for the determination of uh, several of the loads so for example seismic loads and wind loads in chapter 16 of IBC uh, 2018 and 2021 it doesn't give enough information about the procedure to determine loads so for example wind loads in this particular lecture and also for seismic loads also uh, chapter 16 of IBC 2021 directly refers to ASC 7 so it uh, it prescribes the designer to follow ASC 7 approach for the automated determination of uh, wind load and seismic load and all other loads also. So therefore the designer is referred from IBC uh, 2018 or 2021 directly to ASC 7-16 which is this particular document. So this should be used in conjunction with, with the IBC International Building Code. Uh, for the purpose of calculation calculating design loading so we will be only focusing on the wind loading in this particular uh, document so in I ASC 716 we had uh, these chapters associated or prescribing the wind load calculation procedures chapter 26 prescribes the general requirements or provisions which are used in all of the all rest of the of the chapters so it prescribes general loading requirements for wind load but then chapter 27 and 28 these two chapters prescribe the actual uh, wind load calculation procedure or wind analysis procedure and they actually prescribe two of such procedures for the main wind force resisting system the first one is called directional procedure i will explain the difference between these two procedures in a minute first one is directional procedure and second is called envelope procedure so 27 and 28 are the main chapters prescribing the wind load calculation procedure and then there is a chapter 29 which is uh, 
not for main wind force resisting system of a building it is for any appurtenances or any other associated structures this prescribes the directional procedure for those structures these may include parapet walls or any other appendages which are attached to your main wind force resisting system then uh, chapter 30 prescribes the wind load procedure for components and cladding not for the main wind force resisting system only for components and cladding chapter 31 then prescribes the wind tunnel procedure all of the above uh, directional and envelope procedures they are formula based they directly prescribe uh, an empirical formula to determine design wind pressure and then based on your exposure area you convert them into design wind forces but this chapter 31 prescribes the wind tunnel procedure which is a separate method to determine design wind load and uh, you might know already that this procedure actually is based on developing a reduced scale physical model of your structure and subject it to wind tunnel testing and then that uh, structure actually uh, is equipped with several of the sensors depending upon what approach you are using there is a high frequency force balance and then there is a high frequency pressure integration technique so you can use any of these two techniques to finally come up with the design wind load which you should apply to your computer model for the purpose of wind design so then chapter 31 is the wind is is prescribe uh, the provisions or guidelines about wind tunnel procedure but there is a separate asc document also for wind tunnel testing and several of the guidelines are also available so this chapter 31 is a very uh, brief chapter which is just Uh, prescribing the minimum requirements and it guidelines about the minimum considerations which you should keep in mind while performing the wind tunnel test but for details you should refer to other asc guidelines uh, which are specified only for wind tunnel testing so in this particular session we will be only focusing on main wind force resisting system not on components and cladings not on appendages or parapet walls and also we will be only focusing on directional procedure and not the envelope procedure so first let me explain what is the uh, difference between directional procedure and envelope procedure so the directional procedure is a procedure for determining wind loads on buildings for a particular specific wind direction in which the external pressure coefficients used are based on past wind tunnel testing of prototypical building models of for the corresponding direction of wind so this procedure prescribes us a formula to determine uh, the wind design wind pressure for our building in a particular direction and that formula requires the external pressure coefficient and that coefficient is derived based on many past wind tunnel testing but those wind tunnel testing were performed only in a particular direction to develop the guidelines about external wind external pressure coefficient so the model actually in wind tunnel you know that you can perform the wind tunnel testing in one particular direction for example this is the wind tunnel cross section uh, i mean uh, uh, side view and you have a turn table at the bottom of wind tunnel on top of that you put your physical model of your building and then you apply the wind force so that turn table allow you to rotate your model at any certain angle so that you can change the angle of attack of that wind but that rotation process that turn table rotating with different angles of attack that was not performed in these wind tunnel tests while developing the directional procedure so several of the past wind tunnel tests were available which were only based on one particular direction of wind and not based on the rotation of model at certain angles so all those wind tunnel tests were used to develop the guidelines about external pressure coefficient these are in the form of tables or charts 
and they are prescribed in ASC 7 so you can directly use them to take or determine the external pressure coefficient for your building so therefore since the wind tunnel testing uh, behind this uh, method is only in a particular direction of wind uh, therefore it is this method is called directional procedure on the other hand just see what is enveloped procedure this is a procedure in which the wind load uh, is determined and uh, the pseudo external pressure coefficients are derived from past wind tunnel testing just like the directional procedure but here the prototypical building models were successfully rotated through 360 degree such that the pseudo pressure case produce key structural actions that envelop their maximum values among all possible wind directions so here the external pressure coefficients are derived based on a past wind tunnel testing where the model was rotated for all 360 degree and uh, the maximum uh, the pseudo pressure cases which produce the maximum structural actions those coefficients are prescribed for the calculation of uh, wind pressure on your building using an empirical formula so although both of those methods are based on an empirical formula which directly can give you the design wind pressure for your input building but the wind tunnel testing at the back of these two procedures is different one is a testing only in the particular direction of wind and in the envelope procedure the wind tunnel testing is based on the rotation of prototypical model through all 360 degree and then the maximum or envelope values are recommended for this particular procedure so therefore this is called envelope procedure and then this one is called directional procedure so there are two separate chapters this is chapter 27 and then this is chapter uh, 28 and then there is a wind tunnel procedure also this is the explicit procedure this is chapter 31 and this procedure you might know already that it is a procedure to determine minimum loads on buildings and other structures in which the pressure or forces and moments are determined for each wind direction considered from a model of the building or other structure and its surroundings in accordance with chapter 31 which means in accordance with, with the wind tunnel testing so here instead of using a formula to determine wind pressure you explicitly apply the wind force uh, to a prototypical model of your building and determine the pressure at different location and then again it depends on what procedure you are using because if you are using high frequency force balance then you may install a sensor at the base if you are using pressure integration then you may have sensors installed all along the height of your structure and then you can integrate that pressure into wind forces so these are the three main procedures which you can use for determining the design wind load for your structure so uh, we will be again going back to discuss the hierarchy of chapters in ASC 7-16 as I have said earlier that chapter 26 prescribes the general requirements so it prescribes that what basic design wind speed you should use obviously the values are or figures are only available for us uh, for this particular step uh, the national building codes of different countries would provide the guidelines about what what design wind speed should be used this is one of the main input variable which is converted into the design wind pressure we will see that expression for directional procedure in a moment then it guidelines uh, guides about the the wind directionality factor this all of these factors which i am discussing now they will be used to uh, to determine the design wind pressure using that empirical expression so we have the wind directionally uh, directionality factor then exposure category how to classify your building into different exposure categories topographic factor accounts for the topography of your uh, site gust gust effect factor then enclosure classification whether your building is open 
partially enclosed or fully enclosed and then about the internal pressure coefficient uh, this also is mentioned guidelines are there in chapter 26 then we have the wind loads on the main wind force resisting system they can be determined either by chapter 27 which is the directional procedure uh, or chapter 28 which is the envelope procedure and then uh, th these two are for main wind force resisting system uh, we also have a directional procedure for building appurtenances which means roof overhangs or parapets and then finally we also have a third procedure explicit procedure based on wind tunnel testing for components and cladding we have a chapter 30 and then we can also use the wind tunnel testing to determine wind pressure for components and cladding also so chapter 31 is applicable to both the main wind force resisting system as well as for components and cladding so after we understand this uh, this hierarchy uh, as I have said that we will mainly focus on directional procedure for general buildings buildings of all heights chapter 27 so chapter 27 have two parts uh, one first part one is uh, prescribing the wind design procedure uh, the, the determination procedure for enclosed partially enclosed and open buildings of all heights so this part one is the general generally applicable part for all buildings then we also have a simplified procedure in part 2 which is applicable to low rise buildings having a height less than 160 feet so it is applicable to simple diaphragm buildings so if your building is in this particular category then you can go for a simplified procedure the difference between the general procedure which is part 1 and the simplified procedure which is part 2 is that uh, you calculate the wind pressure using specific wind pressure equations which are applicable to each building surface so you apply that equation and determine wind pressure for your building however in this simplified approach the wind pressures are obtained directly from a table right so the building may be of any general plan shape and roof geometry that matches the specified figures and for those figures the tables are available and you can directly take the wind pressure from those tables but obviously your building have to fulfill this requirement that height should be less than 160 it should be a simple diaphragm building then envelope procedure also have two parts similar two parts the first part is for partially enclosed and enclosed low rise buildings and we have to use specific equation which is applicable to each building surface in this part one and then we also have a, a simplified procedure for simple diaphragm low rise buildings in which the wind pressures are directly obtained from a table so in envelope procedure also we have uh, two parts and then finally we have the wind tunnel procedure which is which can be used for main wind force resisting system as well as for the components and cladding of any building or structure so cladding design is itself a separate topic main wind force resisting system is can be designed separately and cladding can be designed separately 